Okay, so thank you for having us. I'm excited and I have the privilege of facilitating this panel discussion on what investors want. Uh, so just a bit of a background on who Clive is and who Ian is. Um, Clive is the former Chief Operating Officer of Accenture South Africa and has over 28 years of management consulting experience. Uh, he's played numerous roles, uh, leadership roles, and he's currently the CEO of GrowTech. Uh, so welcome, Clive. Well, thank you very much. Just to qualify that, the CEO of Kalon Venture Partners. Thank you, Kalon, Kalon Venture pra uh, Practice. Okay, uh, Ian um, is the managing partner of Havaic, and he's, uh, which is an investment and advisory firm that specializes in early stage, high growth African businesses. Um, thank you for joining us and welcome, Ian. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, so thank you for having us. I think my biggest, my first question to both of you uh, is just to reflect on 2020. What a year. I remember we started, I think, Ian, we had uh, uh, the first fundraising conference uh, last year around this time where we had the opportunity to speak into what was now the global pandemic, what has panned out to last longer than we anticipated it would. Um, so I want to pose a question to you guys. Uh, what, what has it been like investing during a global pandemic? Um, well, I'm happy to, to, to start off. So I mean, you know, I think every everyone uh, joining us today will, will be quite aware that um, the pandemic has resulted in um, a unique acceleration in the adoption of technology, both in South Africa, Africa, and globally. So both Clive and myself, we are fortunate enough to be technology investors. So, you know, with a bit of luck and a little bit of brains, we, we seem to find ourselves in the right sort of sector the, at the right time. Um, I guess in terms of from an investing point of view, notwithstanding that there are challenges, um, you know, it was kind of, I think Warren Buffett probably summed it up and I'll, I'll paraphrase it uh, from something that he said was, in, in times of crisis, you can either go into a defensive strategy um, or you can kind of say, well, uh, looking back, some of the largest corporates globally, the, you know, the, the, the Dells and the Apples and you know, even, even the Amazons um, were all founded uh, around the crisis. So you can say, well, what opportunities are going to present themselves that otherwise wouldn't have been there? Um, so on our side, coupling that kind of premise together with um, this, this kind of rise in the adoption of technology, um, we took the view that, that there were some really great opportunities that emerged. Um, and, and from our side, we, we probably had our most active viewer well, not probably, we did have our most active year in 2020. Um, of course, it had challenges. Zoom is 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 a nice, nice uh, tool, but it's not how you form close relationships. Um, but you kind of, uh, you overcome that um, uh, and, and kind of, have, you know, have no choice but to move forward. So challenging, but certainly exciting. And we really, you know, are lucky to find ourselves in a position where 2020 did result in some fantastic opportunities uh, being added to our portfolio. Absolutely, thank you. That's that's interesting. And Clive, how's it been like investing? Yeah, I think uh, thanks for that. Uh, I think you know we never missed a beat. I must be perfectly honest with you. So we have six companies in our second fund, and all of them very disruptive digital tech companies. Um, our minimum growth we had year on year growth was 80%. Our maximum was 800%. So we grew between about an average weight at about 215% wow. during the year. I must be honest with you, I think, so we didn't make, I think very much like Ian, we probably made more investments. Um, I haven't actually done the, the, the total follow-on investments plus new investments uh, during 2020. The only thing for us, I must be honest with you, we invest in people. At the end of the day, we invest in people. You know, we, mm. we invest in, we build the people and the people build the businesses. And that's how we do it. You know, we help build people that build great businesses. So we had to get our mindset changed from really getting to know people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, having dinner with their families and having lunch and drinks and whatever else you do. Because at the end of the day, you have to be able to, you're going to form a relationship between seven and 10 years with your entrepreneur until you can mm. exit their businesses. You have to get to know them. So, we had to get through that mind shift change of saying we might not meet these entrepreneurs and did not meet the entrepreneurs face to face. We made investments without actually meeting them. So we made new investments and never actually having sat and had a coffee with, with an entrepreneur. Now that was, took us about two days to get over that, 
But then we went back, we said, look, here we are where we are. We can't change what's happening around us. So what we can do is we can make sure we continue investing. We had the capital, we still seen great companies and we continued life as usual. I think we're the, as, as Ian said, I mean, COVID has accelerated digital technology by, I'd say, five years, a minimum five years in, 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 our, in our clients, in, in the corporate clients. So we saw we, in the past, to get to the CEO to go and see them, it took you a month, six weeks. Now, mm. within a week, within a day or two, you had a Zoom call. So our productivity, I spend more time with, or more time with our investing companies, probably three times more time with our investing companies than I did in the previous year. And I spend more time with clients, capital providers, everyone, just because they were available. And we just went hour to hour to hour. So, you know, they say if you, if you, if you, you dealt, dealt a lemon, make lemonade. And that's exactly what we did. That's, that's quite encouraging to know that, you know, for entrepreneurs to know that investors never missed a beat and that, you know, you probably made the most investments um, in, in 2020. Moving on to the next thing, I think looking ahead, um, uh, Matsi mentioned, you know, entrepreneur, what entrepreneurs are doing in Kenya and investors in Nigeria. Uh, and I think Flutterwave was one of the biggest things to come out of, um, out of Nigeria. Um, what, what, what do we expect? What are you expecting from South Africa and Africa at the moment when it comes to investment? Um, so it's probably like uh, the first time someone breaks the five minute mile. Up until that point, it's impossible. Um, but as soon as someone break, you know, breaks it, it's, it's kind of within the realm of possibility. So I think, you know, it's, 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 it's the, you know, the likes of... Uh, you know, Jumia and uh, Flutterwave and, you know, there's a whole bunch of other ones. Um, it's a switch uh, which, which has an IPO yet. You know, the, these are all African unicorns um, and it's kind of going to accelerate. So once that five minute mile has been broken, you're going to see more and more entrepreneurs realizing this is a possibility. Um, I guess the thing to unpack is, is, is not just, uh, you know, them kind of breaking that, um, that uh, spiritual, you know, level of a billion dollars, it's, 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 it's around how, how, they, how they were able to do that. Um, and, and there's very different players. So you talked about, you, you mentioned, you know, South Africa, mm -hmm. Kenya, Nigeria, very, very different markets. So from our perspective, South Africa, um, which is from a equities point of view, heavily dominated by a handful of world-class blue chip corporates. Um, and what that means is, is, is that we have typically tended to build as technology uh, entrepreneurs for those blue chip corporates, um, which, which is not a bad thing, um, because if you can service kind of, you know, um, let's just say easy example would be a NASP as a South African company once upon a time that operates globally, there's no reason why you can't service uh, an equivalent business in the US and Europe, uh, in Asia. So if you're building for, for kind of powerhouses locally, you can certainly build and compete internationally. So we certainly see how you're going to get to that billion dollar mark uh, more on a B2B strategy in South Africa. Um, and, and the second point to that is from a population point of view, we're not that big. You know, 50 million people is a lot of people, but it's not 200 million people in Nigeria. It's not 150 million people, um, you know, in the, in the Kamisa region, Kenya, Rwanda, um, Tanzania, Uganda, et cetera. So we don't have that B2B, B2C population required to really get to scale. But when you go into Nigeria, you know, I've already mentioned 200 million people. When you, if, if you're in the payment processing space and you happen to get a couple of bucks every time one of 200 million people happen to uh, do an internet payment or internet purchase, you can kind of, you can hit, hit that scale quite quickly. So there's different strategies for different markets, um, mm -hmm. but, but certainly, it's great to see um, the foreign interest coming in. So, you know, of course, locals, we want locals to invest. We locals investing in Africa in our, in our future, but foreign capital helps to bring, build markets. So it not only brings in, in, in uh, capital, but it brings access to mar new markets, new skills, best practices, new networks, et cetera. So there's a whole lot of really encouraging things happening on the continent um, that, that, yeah, to my earlier point, I think that this five minute mile has been broken and you're just going to see more and more and more. And hopefully it kind of becomes like the weather, you know, it's sunny today, move on. We just, another unicorn's been made today, move on. Let's move on to the next one. So right. certainly, you know, on our side, we are incredibly encouraged um, by the flutter waves, uh, the inter switches, juniors, yeah. et cetera. Thank you, Ian. I think, I think I'll add to that. I mean, 
you know, to me, and, and then the metaphor I would use, um, and Lowe mentioned up front in his um, introduction that uh, Africa was the fastest growing venture capital uh, continent in the world. Now, I didn't have those stats, but I, it doesn't surprise me. But, it's, but at the same time, it is coming with a very, very low base. Mm -hmm. So yes, in all honesty, Africa, the, you know, I say a couple of years, um, um, Ian uses the metaphor of, uh, of the 500 mile. I just use a tap metaphor. You know, that the, the tap was open and it was just dripping, dripping, dripping. A little bit of a drip here, a little bit of a drip there. There was a little bit of investment here. But that tap is flowing now. It's really flowing. And the, the African continent is becoming more relevant internationally. And at the rate that it's going, there's just no turning back. You know, I've been in the last two weeks contacted by international VCs about potentially investing in a fund in South Africa for an African fund. This hasn't happened to me in, in eight years since I left Accenture. And in the space of a month, there's three top family offices, VCs, international capital providers that have contacted us to say we'd like to use you as a conduit to potentially deploy capital in Africa. And that's just, it's because of the likes of people are seeing that they're not getting the returns in the rest of the world. The rest of the world, the number of VCs in America, there's just trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. There's just so much capital chasing, not enough deals around the world. So we just don't have that capital chasing. We've got great deals across Africa, great entrepreneurs, great human capital, but just not enough capital. So mm. you see the majority of the capital chases Series B, Series C, where you get a 10, 20, $30 million raise, and that's typically capital coming from outside of the country, or one or two um, African VCs, very few uh, local VCs. So all of a sudden, the taps are open. I'll tell you something, you ain't seen nothing yet. I just think we start, we're starting to see something special. I mean, if you look at um, the, the, the world population project, pr prediction up to 2050, they say there's going to be 2.4 billion people on the, extra on the planet and 1.2 billion of those are going to come from Africa. So you can just see where the opportunities and the money always follows opportunities. And we are very excited about, we are only a South African fund right now, but we want to you know, really think about creating a, a, a Pan-African fund because that's where we see the, the, the big opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much for your insights. Uh, I think we've actually run out of time, but yeah, I think all the entrepreneurs on this line have gotten the opportunity to hear what your thoughts are. And it's exciting to know that, you know, this, this space is actually growing. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ian, Clive, great to hear all of that. Glad, glad, glad to hear you guys are on fire like this. It's really uh, inspiring to hear. Well done and keep up the great work. We'll, we'll keep the conversation going. Thanks, Lo. Hey, Lo here, one of the founders of Outsource CFO. If you enjoyed this video, make it official. Click subscribe.